The Introvert's Edge podcast was designed to create a dialogue around introversion, to stimulate a discussion around our disadvantages, how we overcome those disadvantages, and what we consider our introvert's edge. Together, we're finally going to confront the stigma around introversion, showing that we're not second-class citizens. We're just different, and we need to embrace that. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Introverts Edge podcast. I have to admit, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this interview that we have today. I'm introducing you to Jeb Blunt and he's not only the author of a thousand books on sales that have pretty much all hit the bestseller list, he's also the founder of a company that has made the Inc. 500 and a little bit closer to home, you might have noticed that he wrote the foreword for my book, The Introverts Edge to Networking and outed himself publicly as an introvert. So this guy spends his life teaching people how to sell. And as we all know, introverts really struggle to believe that we can. So we're gonna rip that open today, as well as talk about pricing, because Jeb's new book is all around how to sell the price increase. So without further ado, Jeb, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. It's nice to be back with you. And uh, I always enjoy our conversations. And thanks for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> Mate, it's, it's my pleasure. And I, I have to say, I'm excited about the shoe being on the other foot, right? You've done a ton to promote my work, which I'm grateful for. But, uh, you know, I really wanted to spend today's episode, as you know, I'm passionate about helping the world see that introverts can sell. And part of that mission is really about outing other exceptional salespeople. And I mean, you're on the global guru list just the same as I am. So because of that, I, you know, outing you as an introvert's a really exciting topic for me, but also really getting into that personal upbringing story as well is super important. So let's start by, you've written about sales, you talk about sales, and everyone knows that sales is the thing that introverts struggle with. Firstly, I'd love to know what happened as you were growing up to make you decide that you wanted to be involved in sales. And then secondly, was there any struggles that you had that as an introvert you found were a little bit harder on you that you had to overcome? Well, you know, the thing about selling for me and when I look at sales, sales is a bubble that I live in. So it's not the rest of my life. And uh, inside the sales bubble, uh, I just have a system and process that I've been able to develop over the years that allows me to be successful and at a level that most people are not, um, and despite being an introvert. But we've talked about being an introvert and extrovert before. In fact, I was having a conversation earlier this morning with a group from HubSpot uh, on their book club about uh, what person said, I'm an introvert, so I don't like making cold calls. And what I pointed out to her is I said, being an introvert has nothing to do with making a cold call. I mean, if you think about it, making a cold call for an introvert actually is a pretty easy thing to do because you're on the telephone, you make the cold call, then you get off and there's no more investment in the relationship. So it's not like anybody's taking energy from me in that moment. Uh, I'm just calling up and asking a simple question, can we meet? And I found early on, for example, that I was really good at that, where a lot of people, all the extroverts I work with, they were like, I can't make cold calls. I want to go in person. And if I need to be there in person, but to me, being in person was incredible incredibly inefficient. And I didn't like it. Like I didn't want to go up and like have to do small talk and all this other stuff. I call you up, ask you for the appointment, set the appointment, and then I can get prepared for the meeting. What I explained to her was that the reason she was having a hard time making cold calls had nothing to do with introvert or extrovert. It had everything to do with where she sat on the empathy scale. So she's a highly empathetic person. And when you're really empathetic, making a cold call, you, you ended up projecting your empathy on the other person and say, well, I wouldn't want someone doing that to me. I would want them to build a relationship not understanding that a cold call has nothing to do with building a relationship and everything to do with asking for time. Again, a system, right? I understand that cold calls asking for time and then sales is asking for a series of commitments. So I learned early on, I was I don't know, 13 years old and I was selling dad animal funeral services um, from my farm in, in Georgia. And that if I just had a simple process, it was easy for me to connect with people, get them to buy from me, and then I could go do my job. So, um, so I think that understanding the, the, you know, this, the difference between introverts and extroverts is that a lot of the people that I worked with, um, they would use charm and their, uh, their charisma and their, their gift of gab to, as, as their sales weapon or sales tool. And I used a system and process as my sales tool, and I consistently outperformed them. And 
A good way of looking at this is, um, uh, have you ever heard of Sutton's Law? But Willie Sutton was a lawyer, I mean, a lawyer, was a, a, a bank robber, not a lawyer, a bank robber in the <laughs> 1920s and 30s. And, uh, and he was asked by a reporter one time, why do you rob banks? And his reply, we all know, is, uh, well, that's where the money is. And, uh, but there was a, a, a corollary to that, that that was later on in that interview where they asked him why he used a machine gun to, to rob banks. And he said, because charm and personality doesn't, doesn't get you the money. So the same thing for me, like when I, when I go into a sales call as an introvert, I recognize that charm and personality is really not my strong suit. What my strong suit is, is setting myself up to win. So, uh, so I early on I latched onto something called win probability. I understand how to play the game in a way that gets me in a position where I can win. I learned how to engineer relationships through the sales process so that I'm creating a world where people want to buy from me. They're motivated to buy from me uh, within the confines of the sales process. I mean, if they met me outside of the sales process, they might not want to buy from me because I typically am a wallflower. So I learned how to do that early on. Now, from a, 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 you know, what, were there things that I needed to learn how to get out? Like, what were there things for me as an individual, as an introvert? The answer really is no. I mean, I think that the, the hardest thing for me was learning to just be who I am. Because, for example, in my early 20s, I'm learning how to sell. It's go play golf, like go to lunch, go to dinners, go to ball games. And like, I would rather run my head through a brick wall. You've got one behind you and I got one behind me than to go to lunch with a client or to go play golf all day long. Like I could think of anything worse for me than to spend an entire day playing golf because most of the time I was there, I would want to go someplace else. And I don't mind client dinner so much, but I mean, it just wasn't like a, like, that's not how I sold. But that's what the expectation was. What, what I learned, though, is that none of that really mattered. Like if I, could, if I could end the confines of the sales process, I could cause the customer to want to be motivated to do business with me because they like me. And it's easy to be likable when you listen to other people. That's a simple thing to do. And um, I'm able to solve their problems. That's what a process allows you to do is to get, do good discovery so that I can understand what's important to them and build a value bridge to that, then I could win. And it didn't make a difference if I took them to lunch or not. In fact, I could outperform everybody if I could do those things. So the hardest thing for me, if you think there's one thing I had to get over with, it was that guilt or that self-doubt of, of feeling that I wasn't doing what I should have been doing because I wasn't, I wasn't good at those things. And that was like a, you know, for me personally, that was like a 20 year journey of finally coming to, and maybe it's, maybe I'm still there where I still feel guilty, but I just don't feel like I, I motivated to go have lunch with people <clears throat> or play golf with people. I just don't have it. And I just had to accept that's who I am. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but there's a better way. And I think that, uh, I think that, you know, by the trophy case I have full of trophies in my income, you know, long-term has been driven by the fact that systems and processes work way better than charm and personality. I think that's really great advice. And I, I think what I'm hearing constantly is I spend my energy on the things that allow me to be better at the thing that otherwise would be uncomfortable, as opposed to the activities that I'm not going to enjoy that the extroverts are going to be better at anyway, like going to golf and having those luncheons and things like that, which, you know, I will say up front, while I'd love to dig deeper into that, I, we, um, Jeb has interviewed me twice on his show, which is called Sales Gravy or the Sales Gravy Podcast, and we go into depth into both of these topics. As a matter of fact, in his own university, there is a whole load of training around us talking about the things we won't do and the things we will do when it comes to the activities. And all of it, by using process, allows us to sell better than the average salesperson, the better than the average extrovert, and a lot of the introverts that are just winging things as well because they don't know how to do anything differently and we get to do it the way we want to do it. So I think that one of the things that's really interesting to, about what you just said, though, is you talked about apathy as opposed to introversion. And I think this is an important point because I spend my life helping people realize that introverts are not second-class citizens, that the path to success is just different. But once people are armed with that, that doesn't mean that just because you can that you will. So because of that, Jeff, I'd love to just delve a little bit deeper into that. And if you were an introvert watching this, and for the longest time you said, I couldn't sell, and 
now you've picked up a copy of your book or you've watched some programs about how to sell, that doesn't mean that you're actually going to do the work when it comes to applying it out in the real world and doing that legwork that's necessary to have a rapid growth business that you love or to pursue a great sales career. So if you were the person listening that has never put real energy behind these activities, how would you suggest they get out of that apathy problem? Well, I think I go back to if, if like if you're uncomfortable selling, it is not because you're an introvert. It just it, you're blaming on introversion, but it's not that. Typically, you're uncomfortable selling because you're afraid of rejection, and that is not the same thing. I'm as an introvert, I'm not afraid of rejection. I just don't like being with people. I mean, I'm I really the pandemic has been the greatest experience of my life. I mean, I I know this sounds kind of cold, but Lord have mercy, I took all the pressure off me to hang out with people. I got to just do me. But but I love selling. Like I love making income. I love closing deals. I love the game. I'm not afraid of being rejected. I don't like being rejected, don't get me wrong, but I'm not afraid of it. And I've, and I've developed frameworks and systems and processes to get past that. And in fact, as an introvert, me personally, I'm much more of an outcome-driven person than I'm an empathetic person. There's just a, there's just a difference in personalities. And that's baked into who I am. But like, I mean, sitting around and I, I had a big party at my house uh, uh, during uh, in, in uh, early February as part of a club that I'm, I'm involved in. I'm so much happier when people don't talk to me and I can just watch the party from afar and enjoy them than, um, than when people are trying to engage me in conversation. It completely drains me. It just, it just, it, it actually ruins my experience. That's, but that has nothing to do with fear of rejection. It has everything to do with just who I am and what I, what I, what I enjoy. So what I would say to you is if you're a person, you're a business owner, and you say, I don't like sales, what I would look inside, deep inside, go look in the mirror and ask the question, why don't you like it? You're using introversion as a crutch for your fear of rejection. Now, that fear of rejection is real. It, 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 it's, it's not something that like, is a psychological problem for you. You truly don't like being rejected, nor does any other human being on earth other than maybe sociopaths. And, and, and the reason that you feel that way is that you understand that the, you, you know where the lines are drawn. You understand that, that not pushing people too far allows you to work better in teams and in groups and build better relationships. All of that matters. But the fact is, is that true selling means that you have to go out and find rejection and bring it home. And it means that there isn't a way around it. There's no way under it. There's no way over it. And you can't go backwards. You just have to deal with it and move forward. Now, the best way of dealing with it is actually do it. So it's something called obstacle immunity. So the more you face rejection, the easier it is to deal with rejection. The more you recognize that when you approach rejection with relaxed assertive confidence, rejection typically will lean into you. And it makes it easier for you to get the other person to, um, to, to listen or to pay attention or to uh, engage and answer your questions. And it makes it easier for you to engage them. So I would begin there. And when you look in the mirror, recognize that the problem is, is that you're afraid of rejection. You don't want to be too pushy. You don't want to seem like, um, like you don't want to be a person that other people don't want to like. That has nothing to do with introversion. I'm an introvert. I don't care if people like me. I truly, I don't care. I'm, and, I, and I know that's weird, but I just don't because I'm happy alone. And my wife, by the way, is an introvert. She said to me the other day, ago, she goes, you know what? I don't need other people, period. Like, I don't even need you. I'm happy here. Like, I'm, I'm all by myself. I'm going to hurt my feelings when you said that, but I'm good because I was worried about I was like, oh, are you going to be okay? I'm, I'm going on a trip. You're going to be alone. So, so the, the, the thing that I would say to you is it's that. You're using introversion as a crutch. And, oh, by the way, you also may feel like because of what you've learned or seen about sales over the years, like me, I have to get used to the fact that I just – I, going to lunch with people and hobnobbing, that's just not my style. You think that you need to have gift of gab. You think that you need to be really, really good with people in order to sell things. And so that becomes a crutch as well because you've got this mental image of what you think selling is. And inside of you, everything is screaming, I don't want to do that. I get that. Start with rejection though. That is where you sit on the empathy scale. So if you're a person, let's say, for example, Matthew, you and I are having a conversation, you're my customer, and I need to ask you to meet with me again so I can do a proposal. 
if in that moment, for example, you're a business owner and that's a moment of truth where typically in somewhere inside of your brain, you're thinking to yourself, man, I don't want to be too pushy. And, you know, maybe maybe if I'll just kind of leave some awkward silence and Matthew will do the job for me. And a lot of your meetings end up in these sort of wishy washies. We'll get back together at some point in the future. If you're if you're having that conversation with yourself, you are higher on the empathy scale which means that it's easier for you to feel what Matthew is feeling. And by the way, my wife is a total introvert and high on the empathy scale. I'm a total introvert and I'm low on the empathy scale. I'm, a, I'm more outcome driven. So we're, and we're the complete opposite that way, although we both share the fact that we prefer to be alone, which is fine. Um, so if you're there, what you need to do is start being intentional about outcome. In other words, as you're dealing with a customer, you need to create a system that allows you to decide in advance what you're going to ask for. Sometimes you need to practice it, um, but you need to know, like, here's what I'm going to ask for at the end so that when you get to the end, your brain says, okay, this meeting's not over until I ask Matthew to meet with me again so I can do the proposal. By the way, if you're an introvert and you are you know, low on the empathy scale, in other words, you're more outcome-driven like me, which means you're, you're typically more self-centered, in those situations, you need to be more intentional about empathy. So you have a tendency to blow up your relationships because you go in and talk at the person, right? You put the emotional wall up because that's how it feels. And and so in and I go, Matthew, you want to meet, you know, again to go to the proposal. And he goes, Yeah, not really, because I'm just not that into you because you're a putz, right? So so I you on either either side of the scale, you need to be intentional about those things. On the other hand, if you're if you're like me, you were the introvert who said, I'm supposed to do these things. I feel guilty because I don't want to. It, it creates a level of anxiety and stress inside of me that I'm, and I know it's hard to put that into words how I feel, but I, it, I, I've, I've, I'm constantly have this like guilty feeling where I like, I, I, example, I was, I was, I did an international keynote last week and I had a client who, um, asked me to go to dinner the night before I'm getting ready for the event. And you and I have talked about this before in some of other conversations. And I actually since the conversation that we had, by the way, it was almost like going to my therapist is hanging out with you. Um, <laughs> I've gotten way better at it. Like I, they sent me a text message. So normally I'm racked with guilt. Like I, I want, they want to have dinner with me. I don't really need to have dinner right now. I need to go sit by myself in the dark room because tomorrow I'm delivering a two hour keynote to an international audience of salespeople who are starving to meet with me. And I need to be my very, very best. And they're going to take all my energy into tomorrow. I'm going to feel like crap. And I'm going to be happy. Like instead of doing all that, I just, wrote back and said, how about tomorrow night? Because tonight I need to prep. Like I was just, I was yeah. intentional about what I was going to ask for. Prior to that, I would have just been racked with guilt and I probably would have caved and said, okay. And then I would have felt terrible the entire time. I would have had a bad experience. I wouldn't have liked myself very much. So the next morning I wake up because they stay out too late and I'm just, everything's wrong. I've gotten better at that. That's what I mean about being intentional. Absolutely. Uh, but but overcoming that, I think a lot of I think I just believe a lot of introverts feel this way. That internal guilt and struggle inside of I'm supposed to be this person, but I don't know how to be that person. They absolutely. Let it go. Be. They absolutely shouldn't yeah. be. And I think that this is one of the important things that you constantly need to be thinking. I mean, there's, yeah. there are studies to say that people deem rejection the same as being spanked. Now, the truth is it doesn't hurt, especially if you learn not to take it personally. And Jeb and I both talk about focusing on sales systemization, networking systemization, public speaking systemization. Gosh, every part of my business, and I know Jeb's, is focused on systemization, which takes the personal rejection out of it anyway. So if you learn to focus on system, it's going to remove a lot of that problem of feeling like that rejection is because of you. And the second piece of advice, and this is key, is desensitizing yourself to the conversations you need to have. You know, I talk frequently about going, if you need to talk about price, you need to talk about the price before you go into the conversation. Practice in the mirror, say it to your wife, talk about it over and over again so you don't get uncomfortable when you're mentioning the number. It is so vital that you do these things and then listen to other introverted coaches, other introverted specialists. You know, Jeb just highlighted that a conversation that he and I had on his podcast led to him feeling comfortable saying, love to, just not today. 
go tomorrow night because that's a skill set that I learned. By the way, that skill set I learned from another person called Dory Clark who was on the Introvert's Edge podcast who said this is what I did because I kept getting asked to speak and I felt wrapped, you know, like totally guilty that I had to say no when they were paying me all this money. So I decided to do this instead. So by understanding that we have benefits and disadvantages and a lot of those disadvantages not only can be fixed by systemization, but actually allow us to outsell out, network our extroverted counterparts, then all of a sudden we can start stop feeling so guilty. And especially if we're high on the empathy scale, stop racking ourselves with guilt because of something that they don't even probably care about and probably just in Jeb's case or my case, probably felt a lot more comfortable with not going to dinner because they've got to go to an event tomorrow too. They were probably just high empathy, feeling like poor Jeb's by himself tonight. Maybe I should take him out to dinner. You don't know what happened. So it's so vitally important we learn from others and we learn strategies so that we don't get affected when something like that is uncomfortable because it shouldn't be. Now, one of the things I will highlight is that if you have a customer, and there's so many people out there right now that are used to having customers that may not have accepted their price and they had to discount originally, or they know now that they're being, they've been undercharging this person for years, and because of that, they have to have that conversation about, you know how you, I charge you this much per hour or this much per thing last week, last year, now I've got to put my price up. Now, we're about at all the time we have today, but we're gonna be interviewing Jeb again on the Quietly Influential Summit. So if you haven't registered yet, make sure you register, it's a free event, and you'll be able to hear from experts like Jeb and so many other introverted specialists and, and experts that happen to be introverted on amazing topics like this. But Jeb, one, what I would love you to do is touch on one major value bomb or something, because I know you've written the book on this topic. I mean, your new book, Selling the Price Increase, is obviously actually just coming out at the moment. So if you haven't yet, pick up a copy of that book. But Jeb, give us one quick inkling of some of the things that people need to be thinking about when it comes to the price increase. And then we'll follow on to that in, in the summit interview. Yeah, the book, Selling the Price Increase, is... Uh, I can say this confidently, the most comprehensive book that's ever been written on selling B2B price increases because it is the only book that has ever been written on selling B2B price increases. Like nobody's ever taken this on. And I've been doing price increases since I was, you know, I 20 in my 20s. I remember my like my boss coming in with a list and saying, I need to get a 6% net price increase. Here's a list of customers. Go see them. And me going, well, you know, I, you got to be kidding me. I don't do that. I, I like giving discounts, but I don't want to give, you know, a price increase. And it turns out that sales professionals and business owners have a deep psychological aversion to price increases because like it just strikes fear in our hearts because we're afraid that we're going to get into a confrontation. That is something introverts do not like. I don't want to be in a confrontation. Uh, it will uh, it creates an opportunity for the, the the customer to tell you that your service stinks, personal rejection, and it also creates an opportunity for them to throw their alternatives to doing business with you in your in your face and say that well they're gonna you know buy from someone else. So uh, back to system and process, what I built was a step by step complete system from the top to the bottom, from practice, from getting ready for it, from uh, from understanding the risk profiles of the accounts before you go in, to the different ways that you might approach them from defending a non-negotiable price increase to uh, approaching customers where there's a no negotiable price increase, even to getting into your largest strategic accounts where there's a lot at risk and a lot of revenue at risk. But like you said, in a lot of cases, the you brought those those clients in at a really low price because you wanted to win the deal, and now you're not making as much profit. So how are you going to raise your prices down the road? I built the entire system from hello to closing the deal to dealing with objections to getting even negotiating price increases. And I'm really, 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 really excited and proud about this book. Um, I told you earlier in the pre-show, it almost crushed me to write this thing because I, I had to put so much into it. But to, but these the... I'm just, I just finished doing the reread through the entire book and um, you've never read anything like this when it comes to price increases. It'll give you everything you need. Well, I can't wait to read it and I'm hoping to get it a little bit earlier than everybody else. But I know from, from Jeb's other books, 
he doesn't really hold back at all. So many people spend fortunes on programs, and I can tell you that what Jeb covers in his book is usually very, very systematic, and because of that, that's, I mean, that's exactly what us introverts need, right? So definitely check out the book, and make sure you check out the, the other interview that we're gonna be doing inside the Quietly Influential Summit, where we're gonna actually go deeper into selling the price increase. So make sure you check out that episode. And again, that's free by joining the summit at the Quietly Influential Summit. Dot com. Now, before we go, I have to ask Jeb the question that I ask every single one of my guests before they get off this show is, Jeb, what do you consider your introvert's edge? Uh, it's, it's the ability inside the, the, the bubble of selling. I, I'm, I'm terrible outside of selling, but I have the ability inside of selling to, uh, I, I, you said this word earlier, but I'm not quite sure if I can repeat it in my head, but it's the ability to desensitize those sales conversations. When I'm in that space, I'm, I'm like, I've got my superhero powers in when I'm selling outside of that, I'm a disaster, but inside of that, that's where, that's where I've just have all my confidence because I just have a system that I believe in that gives me a high probability of winning. So I've got all the confidence in the world. You know, I think that what you're hearing from Jeb is that he learned from a young age and he built on that skill over and over again. You all know my story. I started with 93 doors of rejection, but I studied YouTube videos and I worked every day, sometimes hours more than anyone would ever want to do for themselves. But six weeks later, I was the number one salesperson in the company. And I built on that every single day. This fear of rejection, this belief that introversions in your way is stopping you from creating the foundational skills that you'll then be able to build on over and over every single day to allow you to have the life that you want. And once you realize how simple those skills are and how methodical it is, which is designed specifically for introverts, you wish you started when you were 16 like Jeb, or when you were 18 like I was. Don't stop yourself from learning the skill that allows you to lead the life that you deserve. But for today, I want to thank every single person for joining me on the Introverts Edge podcast. And Jeb, thank you so much for sharing so much value with my audience today. Thank you for having me on. I'm Matthew Pollard, the author of The Introverts Edge to Networking. I'm on a mission to help introverts to be proud of who we are. For the first time, you'll learn a process for networking that feels comfortable and authentic to you as an introvert. A process that doesn't feel salesy or awkward in any way. I saw at least half of my board members, three in particular that I can think of, that now are so comfortable in literally going up to people at events. All of a sudden, I can see the confidence. Most of the networking books and literature out there really focus on hardcore tactics designed for extroverts. As introverts, we're different and we need to embrace that. We need a system that allows us to channel our natural introverted strengths into the networking room. You will learn how to be successful at face-to-face -face networking and a masterful online networker on your terms. It's beautifully written and it provides tremendous value. So I, I, I am honored to, to say, folks, if you haven't looked at the book, you really need to check out this guy's book. It's, it's excellent. It gives you that confidence to truly be yourself, knowing that you're going to be presenting yourself in a way that is authentic and will also really resonate with the person that you're talking with. One of the things you'll love about the Introverts Edge to Networking is it's jam-packed full of more than 20 stories of introverts just like you. People that have likely started in much tougher spots than where you are right now and how they've leveraged the strategies that you'll be learning to obtain phenomenal career and small business success. I was about to give up on my business. The results started coming in right away. In fact, a year later, the Chamber of Commerce awarded me the business of the year. <laughs> you need to go read his book because everything he does is what people need whether they're an introvert or not. I've been fortunate to receive endorsements from some exceptional introverts like Neil Patel, and Ivan Meisner, the founder of the world's largest networking group, BNI. What I love about the Introvert's Edge is that it talks about 
the things that make an introvert successful. The introvert's edge to networking is going to destroy all of the barriers that you have around whether success in networking is possible for you. Now I'm up to kind of five figures, you know, triple my prices or more. It was like the deals just kept coming in and coming in and it, I mean, it was incredible. Like I had never seen anything like it before. I was able to triple my revenue and that happened within six months. We've gone from 10 million a year to 20 million a year. I wrote The Introvert's Edge to networking after the success of the first in the Introvert's Edge series, which focused on sales. I decided that it was just as important, perhaps even more so, that we had a networking book that was designed to help us as introverts dominate in the networking room and in online networking that was specifically written for us. So if you're an introvert, don't delay. Head to theintrovertsedge.com forward slash networking to get access to the first chapter of my new book completely for free today.